Do you ever feel like you are bothering people when you reach out to them or you don't even reach out about your offerings, about your services, about your products because you are afraid to bother people? Well, if that's the case, then this video is for you. Most of you who are watching this are probably givers and supporters. You are very natural when it comes to helping other people, answering other people's questions, uh, coming to their aid. But you are less accustomed to getting, asking for help, reaching out when you have something you need from others, right? So naturally, it feels like you are bugging, bothering, taking up people's time when you are saying, hey, will you consider hiring me for this service or, or, or buying this product? Or will you consider sharing the word, spreading the word about my offerings? So let me reframe it for you um, in a way that maybe will be helpful. If you have had a group of people, a network of people that you've been helpful to over the years, and they, if, if any particular person you believe can really benefit from what you offer, then when you reach out, you are not a you are not a bother. You are a blessing. You are a blessing in your outreach when it is somebody who needs what you, who needs and wants what you have, or they have a network of people who need and want what you have. If it's in one of those two cases, and, and thirdly, particularly thirdly, if they know you, if they trust you, if they like you, if, if, if they like you, trust you, know you, and if they're either someone who wants what you have or knows people who wants what you have, then when you reach out to them, it is a blessing, not a bother. And let me tell you why. Imagine that, you know, you're kind of thinking about like, being a telemarketer, right? Like, like you get a random call from somebody you don't know and they're trying to sell you something, it, that's a bother. That's like annoying. Like I didn't want the call and I don't even want your product. I don't know who you are. Like why are you trying to sell it to me, okay? So that's called being a bother. And, but you are not that when you reach out to your network about your offering, okay? It's more like you've been missing a friend. You've been like, gosh, I haven't heard from so-and-so in a while. Wonder how they are. I hope they're doing great. And then you get a call from them or you get a text or you get an email from them. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad to hear from you. I'm, you know, because I've been thinking about you. It's a blessing. It's a serendipity. It's a synchronicity. Your outreach about your offerings is like that. Okay, you got to shift the mindset on this. So... This presupposes a couple things. It presupposes that you have a network of people that you've been helping over the years, that you've been a nice person to a bunch of people over the years, and I'm, you probably have. I mean, just go and look at the list of your Facebook friends right now. Go to your Facebook, click on friends, look down the list. Do you feel like there are at least some people that would be glad to hear from you? I would, I would love to know. If you, if you want to, please comment below. Do this exercise right now. Go to your list of Facebook friends or go to your email address book or go to your LinkedIn contacts and look down the list of people. Are there at least a couple people, at least 5, 10, hopefully 50, um, 25, 50 or more who are like, yeah, I think those people would be glad to hear from me. Just, just even how I'm doing or because, because I've been helpful to them in some way over the years. Okay? If that's the case, then, and you find out of those 25 or 50 people, you know, I think Bob, I think Mary, I think Suzanne, I think John could, would actually appreciate knowing what I'm up to right now, like the thing I'm offering. And here's the key. They are not thinking about your service all the time or even your own siblings, even your, your um, friends don't really know what you do. I promise you this. I promise you, out of your 10 friends, if you ask them, can you describe what I do? They'd be like, 
Uh, you do that, uh, some, something like healing or something. I don't even know what you do really. I promise you. Okay. So please give that a try and let me know out of 10 of your friends and family, how many can actually describe what you do? Very few. You think, oh my God, they're my friends of family. Of course. No, they, nobody, nobody thinks about you. Okay. Nobody thinks about me. Nobody is thinking about you until you're literally in front of them. Or literally, they, they're reading your email or they're seeing you on Facebook. That is usually when they think of you. And even when they think of you at that moment, they don't remember what you do. They just, they can't even describe what you do. And they don't even know like, who you help. Try this, right? Ten of your friends or family. Do you know what kind of client or customer that I work with? I uh, don't, you know, they don't know. They don't remember. And, and so not only do they can't even describe it, they, when they're in a situation where they're faced with somebody who literally is your ideal client, they don't even remember you. They don't remember your service. Okay. They might vaguely remember you, but they like, they're not even quite sure what it is that you do. So when you reach out to your people, your 25 to 50 people, friends, colleagues, family, you know, classmates, whatever it is who like you, that you've been, you've been a, a positive presence in their life over the years. And then you're saying, I just wanted to mention again, just, re you know, I'm kind of doing an outreach an annual outreach or semi annual outreach just to just remind, you know, remind my, my network. These are the services I offer. I'd be, I, I'd be grateful and honored uh, to help anybody that you send to me, that kind of thing. It's a blessing. It's not a bother. It's like, Oh, I'm so glad this is now, now I know how to help George because I like George and I'm glad that, I have the words now to be able to help him. Like next time I come across, and I promise you, you send out this kind of email and please try to do it individually. Like don't say hi, friends and family and include all your 50 to 100 friends and family in there. That's not nice. That's not courteous. Send it specifically to Sue. Send it specifically to John. Send it specifically to Bob. Send it specifically to Mary. Each separate emails, separate emails and say, hey, Sue, how's it going with the kids? Hey, Bob, how's it going with your job? I know last time we talked, you were going through that. Send me an update, I'd love to know. Um, hey, Mary, uh, I, I saw something the other day, an article that reminded me of you. Here it is because, you know, thought about the conversation we had about this or that. How, you know, let me know, email me back, how's it going? And I also wanna share an update, like this is professionally, like this is what I'm working on, this is the kind of people I, I love to help in case you have somebody that this would be a blessing to. I just wanted to kind of give you the words in case you, it'd be helpful to, to sh send it to them. I'm grateful, I'd love to serve whomever you, you, you send me, okay? So you are a blessing when you do your outreach because you're giving your network the words to know how to talk about you, okay, number one. Number two is that you're giving your network a chance to reciprocate back to you for all the goodness that you have brought them over, over time. You now are able to um, finally give them that chance. Because I promise you, your network, any particular person whom you've helped over the years, like, gosh, I wish there was a way that I could come back and help Stacy or Captain or Gene. I'm just looking at the names uh, here, those who are chatting, thank you. Um, they haven't had an outlet and it's like, the people whom you've helped are probably givers too. You know, a lot of people that, you know, givers attract givers. And so they want to give back to you and they don't know how to give back to you. It's like when you see an opportunity to give back to somebody, of course you take it. If it's somebody you like, you want to get back, right? Do you? Like somebody you like contacts you and gives you an opportunity to give to them that without too much hassle, without too much effort, like, hey, keep me in mind. That's, that's no, no big deal. Right, keep me in mind. Um, just, just FYI, you know, here's here's what I'm up to now. And if you happen to come across anybody, and I think the ask is important. You don't want to say, Gene, can you please look in your email address book now and send me the list of three names? And that's that's aggressive, and that's what some, you know, salespeople do. That's not nice. Now, nobody wants to receive that kind of email. And nobody likes that kind of aggression in person. So why would we do that over email? No, but it's you can be nice about it and say. Hey, just FYI, it's more like an FYI kind of attitude. Like, hey, FYI, 
If you happen to come across somebody who's really hurting in this area or who really needs this, I'd be honored to serve them. I'd be honored, grateful to, to help them out in whatever I can. And this is, you know, kind of what I do with my clients. And um, yeah, just keep me in mind. That's all. That's all. Anyway, write me back. How are the kids? Uh, mine are doing great. I don't know. Whatever you want to say. So give them the chance to reciprocate. Now, if, uh, however, you're like, yeah, I've been pretty bad at keeping in touch with my network and I don't really help a lot of people. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that's not true for most of you, but, uh, but if that's the case, I mean, honestly, I think that's probably my, my situation. My situation is that I am not good at keeping in touch with my network and I haven't been personally helpful to a lot of people, friends and family and whatever. So um, the way I do it, uh, doing the blessing, not a bother thing is um, I build an audience. And if you build an audience through giving in mass, right? Instead of giving to one person at a time, you're giving in mass on schedule, you know, consistently, then you've got a whole audience of people who are grateful to you and who would be like, what? George emailed me personally? Wow, that's a blessing, not a bother, right? What, Gene just reached out to me personally? I love Gene's work. Wow, that's such an honor. So if you build an audience of people, they will be honored to hear from you personally when you want to invite them to an event or, oh, you thought of me for that. Well, thank you. Thank you. You know, I, I've been following your content for a while and I'm, inv I'm honored to be personally invited, you know, or, or to invite it to be, to be working with you one-to-one. -one. Wow, I'll certainly consider that because I've been following your content for a while and I, I really, I'm, I'm really in, a, in resonance with your message and with your presence and with your mission in the world. And, and yeah, if I'm in the right state, of course I would love to work with you one-to-one, -one, right? Like, so building an audience is kind of like a alternative to, um, you know, keeping in touch with all hundred of your closest friends and family and making sure you're on track of who, whose kids are doing what and <laughs> all that stuff. Um, it's kind of, I'll be honest, it's kind of a lazy way of doing it, but not really lazy because you, you see how hard I work. It's just doing it in a different way. Um, but yeah, an audience of people would love, so this is, for example, this is how I filled my group coaching program for 20, for next year, my group coaching program already filled for all of next year before I even announced it publicly. It's because I'm doing what I am teaching you here, which is what I did was, well, I, I, you know, honestly, like more than half of my current group members want to renew. So, they, you know, I gave them that, those spots first. But then the remaining spots, what I did was I individually reached out, just like I'm telling you here. I am individually reached out to, I think, um, I think it was like 40. Uh, I think I had, um, let's see, I had, I had about like 17 slots to fill. And I individually reached out to, no, it was, it was like, Half the people I reached out to got back to me quick enough to fill the spots just like that. And there was like a, the, the, a quarter or half of the other half, like say, oh, am I too late? You know, and then maybe a, a final quarter didn't, they haven't gotten back to me yet, but they might. Um, but it, it's like that. Like I individually reach out to like 30 people who are part of my audience who I think this would be the right thing for them. Um, you know, I've been helping, you know, they, they've appreciated my content or they've been in my classes or whatever it is. I, I noticed that they really resonate with my work. Individually outreach to them and my, the spots are filled. And then I'm like, oh shoot, I haven't even publicly announced it yet. But I wanted to reach out to them first so that they get the opportunity to say yes before the public gets to apply to the program. So anyway, I'm doing that same thing that I'm talking, telling you about. When we reach out, to the right people in a heart of service, we are a blessing, not a bother. That's the bottom line. So you have to figure out who the right people are, okay? And then you have to have that heart of service. And when you reach out and do it consistently, don't reach out to them every month, but reach out to them at least once a year, at least twice a year, you know, at least twice a year is not too much, okay? Be a blessing, not a bother by giving your network or your audience the chance to serve you back, reciprocate to by spreading the word, giving them the words to spread the word about you, okay, and your services. So I hope that's helpful. Um, thanks to those who were able to join me live here, Sharon, Stacy, Janko, uh, Tundi, Captain, um, Jean, 
Susan, thanks all for, for joining. And um, so let's see here. Um, yeah, Jean says, you know, George, I've been teaching in Hong Kong for 10 years and still friends and family will say, so how is Japan? <laughs> you know, it's exactly. My mom, my brothers can't describe what I do. You know, I think my wife kind of can now, but can be, me barely. Like she probably goes around saying, oh, George is a social media consultant, which I kind of am, but you know, it's way more, you know what I mean? Like, like people aren't thinking about you. Um, uh, until you're in front of them, until you send them an email, until you post something and send them a message. No, but everyone's thinking of themselves. And that's not like everyone's selfish, but it's just there's so much going on. There's so many inputs in everybody's lives that everybody, I promise you, nobody's thinking of you until you reach out, until they see you online. Okay, then they like, because if you've ever done something like this, you'll notice you get a lot of referrals shortly after you reach out to your network. But suddenly the referrals stop until the next time you reach out to your network again. Because why? Because only when you're top of mind do you get the referrals. If you're not top of mind, which is like after three days, you know, after a week or two, so that's why, what's the easiest way to get top of mind? Consistent content. That's it. I mean, because you can only reach out to your network like once every six months, right? It's, it, you become a bother if you, <laughs> Okay, you do become a bother if you start reaching out to your network like every month or even every three months. It's a little bit much. Every six months, totally acceptable. So then how do you keep your network top of, you top of mind to your network in the other five months and 27 days? Consistent content. That's, that's it. So that's, that's why I keep asking you to please be consistent with your content because otherwise I promise you, you are not top of mind. For, for anybody except for yourself, right? So, um, and Stacy says, yes, it's so true because I don't even know how to describe what I do. You know, that's, that's part of it. That's part of it. It's because we're not clear. Uh, and that, by the way, is always evolving. If you ask me, George, what do you do? I'm going to give you a different answer today than I would a year ago because I'm evolving too. And I, the way I talk about my, my work changes constantly, continually. Okay, so um, thanks, Yule, for joining as well, and thanks, Sharon, uh, for a comment there. Okay, thanks, everybody. Appreciate your presence here, uh, your support, and I will see you in the next video. Remember, you are a blessing to those you have been of service to over the years. Just remember that. Give them a chance. Give them the words to reciprocate. Be well.